Hey guys and girls, how are you going? Mark Hummer here yet again. Uh, we're talking about lenses today and particularly the S-Liner lenses from the Nikon Z system. Now I have a few to talk about today and really it's the uh, 70 to 200 and some ways I've made it actually more comfortable and user friendly to hold and, and operate all day. And then we have also this new lens of mine, the 51.2 Prime. Now it's a magnificent lens and I'll give a little overview of that and I'll provide of course uh, photo samples and a little bit of video samples as well. Now the video samples I'll be showing is a little bit of my puppy uh, having a swim in a local uh, water area, a little uh, beach, and I was using the 17 to 35 that I've recently acquired as well. So we've got three lenses we're looking at. This one is pretty much reviewing its uh, video capability because that's interesting being an old D-style lens. How's that going on the knee? Now I can system with the FTZ adapter and the whole Z-mount thing. So I'll show you some video test samples of this just to show you and confirm it does work. The videos were taken on the uh, Ronin S so I was uh, holding that apparatus and uh, it was right stable and, and operating really well and I was actually walking backwards through the uh, beach there and the water uh, with the dog uh, swimming towards me and let me tell you that is a real challenge and you want to be pretty brave when you're holding about seven thousand dollars worth of equipment and you're a couple of inches above sea level and you're walking backwards in the water it doesn't take much of a trip to lose everything and go underneath so i was uh, i was very nervous but it all went quite well so as i said i'll show you some samples of that it's just nice to know that these older d series lenses can work providing they have a silent wave motor within them as that one does uh, so anyway, we're going to review this uh, 50 1.2, and it is a magnificent lens, let me tell you, it's uh, brilliant. Uh, when you look at it, it's, it's quite an uh, impressive lens, it has a, quite a lot of bulk and weight to it, and uh, you find that uh, in its general operation when holding it onto the camera, it is quite a little front heavy, and heavy to hold for long periods of time. But in its actual functionality, it is brilliant. It has every feature you need, it has this magnificent, very, very smooth gliding focus ring, if you choose to do any manual focusing with it, uh, which of course it's very suitable for because that shallow depth of field, sometimes like a macro, you really want to fine tune it to yourself, if you're on a tripod of course. Uh, but the autofocus features of it are brilliant. I did a photo shoot uh, only a little while ago with a young lady named Hannah Marie and her friend uh, B, and uh, we had a great time out there taking lots of photos at the Botanic Gardens. And I was using pretty much exclusively this lens, 7200 as well. But there was a few shots with that one because of distance. They were about uh, 50 meters away from me, looking over a water feature to a bridge. But every other photo I took was with this unit here. And let me tell you, it performed magnificently. Breathtakingly sharp, uh, very quick to go, acquire focus, and uh, that shallow depth of field gave some very interesting effects. Now I'm going to give you plenty of photo samples, so I don't think this is just me blah blah blah. I will actually uh, put them up on screen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them up on screen in such a way that it fills the screen so you can get a really good look at exactly how this is coming across. So I uh, look forward to them. What I'll do is I'll uh, be um, just chatting for a little while and then uh, you can have a look at the photos without me trying to demonstrate something at the same time. So as I let you have a look through these uh, various images from the Botanic Gardens and other shots I've taken, uh, you will also see shots a little later on where I'm uh, demonstrating the mount that I have on the uh, 70 to 200, and it's a new little handle arrangement. Uh, so as you see those images, just keep in mind that I've taken them on purpose at various different apertures with the 51.2. So we have the 51.2 at 1.2, of course, and then a little later on you'll see it at f1.8 uh, to compare. So. Uh, the S lens, the 51.8, was a brilliant lens, very sharp and very efficient and worked extremely well. And I was pleased with its performance, but since they've come out with something a little bit more uh, upscale, I thought I'd uh, change over to that one. But that one, knowing, that no way degrades from the 1.8's S's uh, performance ability. It was an outstanding lens and it's highly recommended still. And for like 99% of people, it is probably more than adequate. I mean, that 1.8 lens was light, it was uh, fast, it was convenient and extremely accurate. So I give it a 10 out of 10 as a lens, uh, but I'm just uh, interested to try out the 1.2 to see uh, the difference and just how much more interesting uh, images we can make with it, how much more creativity we can express. So uh, enjoy the images as uh, you run through them. Uh, have a look very closely at the uh, pictures of the 70 to 200, because as I say it's uh, 1.2, then 1.8, then I take another shot at 2.8 and then a shot at f4. 
So if you have an f4 lens and you want to know well, what's the difference between that and the 2.8 or vice versa, you have a 2.8 like a 70, a 24 to 70 and you say well that 2.8 at 50 mil, what's that like against a 1.8? So you have all those images now to compare because it doesn't matter exactly which lens took the photos, they're all talking about Nikon S lenses. They're all sharp, they're all clean, they all work extremely well and focus great. So it doesn't matter which lens it is, it's just the aperture that's really different. So I found that 1.2 very exciting on the photos, gave me that wonderful opportunity of isolating a subject when I was in a tighter area and a little bit uh, compact. My uh, ideal preferred focal length is actually 85 millimeters. I used to love my 85 1.8. I've since uh, you know, got rid of that one now because I do have the 70 to 200, which uh, covers, of course, that focal range. And I'm looking forward to the release next year of the 85 1.2. So I'll have those two primes matching the 51.2 and next year the 85 1.2. And they'll be obviously my primes that I use for most of my portraiture. And I'll use the 70 to 200 only when I need that extra length because someone's at a little further away or I'm shooting over objects and have to get further back. So I got everything covered now and I'm very confident that they're all working extremely well. But getting back into the discussion of the uh, 50 1.2, yes its operation is magnificent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it now onto the uh, camera I have in front of me here, this Nikon Z7. I'll just remove the other lens for now. I'll put that to the side, the 70-200, to 200, and we'll just fit the uh, 51.2 to the Nikon Z7. There we go, so it's all locked in nice and secure and safe now. And as you can see from the uh, size and shape and image of it now, you can see it is quite front heavy and it is quite a heavy lens. So when you're holding it in the hand, uh, for the most part what you're doing is you're holding it over that focus wheel area. Now I'm not exactly very excited about doing that because for me, I like to leave every function on the camera active. I don't turn off the manual focus ring because I like the fact it can override your autofocus any time and it gives you the luxury of when you want to fine tune focus, which this does extremely well, this lens, that to throw on that uh, focus ring is beautifully smooth and very, very gradual. You can make very minor incremental changes without any problem at all. So I encourage people to use it manually when they should wish to, maybe for product photography or so on. Uh, but the autofocus is actually quite special spectacular and fast and very efficient. So you don't really need to use it. But because I will not turn it off or deactivate it, because then when I want to find it and I actually need to use it, I have to come think about, well, what did I do? Did I choose the manual auto button or was it an FN button down the bottom here? Or was there something in the uh, menu, menu that I've got to find? I don't want to be thinking about things like that. That's just, it's too confusing. I've got too many cameras, too many lenses, and I can't remember what I did to which one. So I leave everything uh, functional, and what I've done is instead I've made a new arrangement that makes it more comfortable to hold. Because, you know, a 50, uh, this 51.2 is pretty heavy. It's over a kilo, and it does feel a little weighty, very similar to the 7200 does, forward heavy, and actually quite a bit of weight. So when you're trying to hold it up all the time, your arms and shoulders are getting a little bit exhausted by the end of the day. You're shooting for maybe half an hour, you don't notice, but when you're shooting maybe for a whole day doing weddings or events, and you've got like eight to 10 hour day shooting, everything that can help you feel comfortable is uh, relevant and important. And for a lens you spend so much money on, you wanna make sure it's actually a joy to use. So please just let me make this uh, 70 to 200 safe. I always encourage people to always make sure you put your caps on. The reason being, I tell you, it's interesting while we're talking about that, and it doesn't matter which lens we're referring to, but uh, this is the element that you wanna protect this back end element here, this is where it all counts for image quality. If you get a scratch or a chip on this, your images are gonna be wrecked. It's always gonna show up in every shot. But if you get some damage onto the front, you're never gonna notice it, particularly on a long lens like this. But really anything over about 35 mils, you'll never see any damage to the end. You could get a knife and chip you know, that lens uh, the front and you're still not going to see that in 90% of your images. So uh, that's why I leave a hood on anyway, I leave the hood on wherever possible and that's a protective factor for bumps and knocks anyway and often I have filters on which is a protection. But however I don't absolutely obsess about the front element but I do obsess about taking care of the back element. So just be aware of that one of which one is the most important to care for. 
So uh, we're say we've got the uh, lens on now, and if I try and take photos of it, and I'm holding it in this manner here over the uh, focus ring to support the weight, then what I'm doing is I may be throwing the focus or a little ring at the back here. I could be touching or the buttons and so on, and that just means I could be activating things I don't want to be activating as I leave them on. So the, the way I've found to make this much more comfortable process to use is to modify this handle. Now, as everybody knows, I use a small rig system here, which is an old bracket, and the reason for that is it's a mount for tripods. It has like a Swiss style mount here, but also you can have it up this way and use it in the form of a, a nice portrait style, and it's an Arco Swiss there, so it mounts that way. Uh, having that little bracket coming in and out and retracting means when you want to get access to all your little ports, you can because you can either come through the hole or you come around the side, but you've got access to it anytime you want. Now there's an Allen key always supplied, it's magnetically clipped in the bottom of the small rig uh, arrangement there, so you've always got one handy with you when you wish to make adjustments. There's a little screw at the bottom here, and when you screw, when you put the Allen key in that, and you give it a little twist, see how you can have it up and down, you can make any adjustment of size you want, and if you take it out all the way, the screw, and it's only a few turns, of the, it's not very much, it comes out quite simply, and you can have it completely away. Oh sorry, that was a bit noisy, wasn't it? You can have it completely away. But what I've done here is I've grabbed myself a second little L bracket arm. So it's identical to this one here. As you can see, there's no difference in them at all. They're exactly both the same uh, as far as the bracket goes. The only difference is here, you can see from small rig, I've obtained a little handle, a little grip, if you like, and I've simply bolted it to this handle. Now, how have I done that? Well, with this, the original, uh, it has mounting holes. You may or may not be able to pick them up from there. I'll show you some close-up photos so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So have no fear. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these people who go, oh, look at this, and they put, I think that looks terrible, looks a bit tacky if you like, if it looks like a cheap uh, chocolate bar commercial, you know? So I'd rather just have pre-arranged photos and bring them up on the screen for you. Uh, so anyway, it has all these little uh, screwed quarter inch screw holes, so you've got something to mount with. So I made a little aluminum plate, just three mil aluminum, cut it to the shape here, and then what I did is I screwed it in. So I made it nice and firm. And that's exactly what you're seeing in here. So if you can look in here, you probably see the little screws here and the aluminum plate. And what I've done is I bolted the plate here and here to the uh, bracket. And that way, of course, it's nice and firm and secured on. Then I was able to get the handle, which you can see the little stainless steel screws there. And what I've done there is mounted them through and bolted them to the plate. So now the plate was here, the handle is bolted to the plate, and it's very secure to I think it's six mil screws in there holding it together. So it's very firm, but now it's a gorgeously comfortable thing to hold. And it uh, gives me the chance now of when I attach these two together here, and I'll just uh, feed these through. So we put this in the hole there. I just make sure this little ring is up and out the way when I close it up. There we go. I use this for my cotton carrier, so it's a little bit daggy and in the way sometimes. I just have to be conscious of that. But that's a me thing. You probably won't experience that. Uh, so here we go, we can mount this down now. There's a little one screw, as I say, the Allen key comes with the uh, small rig unit. Just fasten that in, make it uh, secured, put the Allen key back in there, and it just slots inside, it's magnetized, so you can't lose it, it's always with you. And now, as you can see, I have two grips. So I have a, I have a left-hand grip, and I have a right-hand grip in the camera. There's the profile of it there, you can probably see. And of course, I'm getting images coming up to give you a nice close-up detail of what exactly it's looking like and how it all comes together. But what this does mean for me is it gives me the option now with this beautiful 51.2 that is quite weighty to hold it comfortably all day. So I can use two hands. You've got your elbows into your chest there or ribs. And now when you're taking your photos, whichever way you take it, you've got a really good secure grip and you're counterbalancing now that weight from the forward heavy lens and you don't even notice that it's a heavy lens now. Back in the day when I was using the 51.8, I could hold the camera one-handed all day and take photos and not think about it because the lens weighed next to nothing. It was only, what is it, about five or 600 grams. Now this one's twice the weight. Well, it's more practical to have twice the grip power and that's what I have now. And as to say, this grip, this handle, it makes it very user-friendly and comfortable all day. You can swap hands too because obviously you can hold it with your left hand when you want to and you can hold it with your right hand and because you can swap hands to carry it around, of course, that does take weight off as well if you don't have the cotton carrier system to uh, secure it to a vest. So I found this uh, very practical. The lens, as I, as I say itself, is a beautiful lens and I'm very proud of it, happy to be owning it. And if the 85 1.2 is even close to this one, I know I'm going to be very excited about that as well. 
So uh, as I say, to remove this, if you uh, should you not want to use that handle at any time and you decide you're gonna make one, but let's say you wanna do some video work and the video work, it's not very practical to have that, well, you can of course just simply remove it. Sorry, it's a little bit tight now because the paint's still a bit soft, but you can either just have it out and so you've got clearance and access to your ports if you like, or you just take the thing all the way out and of course, and then you've got access to all your ports for video, microphones and HDMI plugs for your monitors and so on. So uh, it was really no effort to take it on or take it off. Storing in a small camera bag now is much easier because now you don't have the handle on the side. And of course you can place that wherever it may fit in the camera bag. And it's not the breadth if you don't want it there all the time. So you've got choices. And I think this handle thing is a brilliant choice. Look, I've used lenses like, for example, uh, the Sigma. 135 millimeter 1.8 that was a brilliant lens too very sharp we used it with the FTZ adapter and it worked miraculously well I was actually very impressed with how well it performed but that was also an equally heavy lens weighed pretty much the same as this 51.2 so that was a weighty lens and I would have loved to have that handle arrangement then to make it more comfortable to use so uh, right now I'm very pleased with that system now, uh, apart from uh, the 51.2, which uh, you'll see more images of and I'll discuss more of in the future as time goes on, that's not going to go away. I own that unit and I'll be doing more detailed reviews of it and different experiences I've had perhaps with video and or with photos in the future. But uh, right now I'm going to talk to you about a similar structure with the 70 to 200 because obviously it's the same sort of situation or problem can be that it's a weighty lens and how do you carry this thing around comfortably all day? So what I'll do is let me put it on the camera. I'm just going to make a little swap over here very quickly. Remembering to protect your rear element. That's very important. Put this on the camera. There we go. That's secured on. Doesn't take long. It's actually pretty quick, isn't it? And so now I have the 70 to 200 on, and uh, that's all very uh, awesome. Now, am I going to use this type of a handle on the system? No, now we're getting a bit too long and heavy. Uh, not only is this now 50% heavier than the 51.2, but it's also a lot longer, and that front uh, end heaviness is getting out of control now. And I'll often use uh, also a teleconverter, a two times teleconverter, which actually even stretches it further and weightier. So it becomes now impractical to hold it in just two hands like that. This is where you want a bracket to hold underneath. And that's what I've made for it. So images will come up on the screen and you'll see all about uh, the details of how I've constructed it. It's really a very simple arrangement. All it is was a very inexpensive little handle bracket you can get from Small Rig. This thing uh, weighs very little, a couple of grams. It's very inexpensive, about 10 to $15. And uh, when you buy it, uh, you can. it's got all the little threaded holes, quarter inch and uh, three eighths, so you can mount it in a variety of ways. If you turn it so it is this way, not so you've only got little three holes on the side here, but if you have it so you have the whole plethora of holes, that means mounting things such as, uh, you know, Argo Swiss brackets for um, your tripods or monopods or Manifrotto system mounts. It's all very simple now because you've got so many holes to choose from and positions. So actually it's a, it's a bonus accessory just for that alone, for mounting options. But for what I'm using it for now is for comfort of use options. So here's the thing, same situation with a 51.2. I leave all my uh, zooms, my focus, my little adjustment rings all active and usable whenever I like. So if I'm holding the camera by the lens, as well as the handle. What I can be doing again is I can be moving all those little things without even being aware of it. And it could be overriding my system, which would be very uh, frustrating on the photos. I've actually had that before where I'm doing the, uh, the two times teleconverter work at 400 mils. And then I go examine the photos and realize I was down to about 300 mils for a lot of those photos because I turned it without even realizing it because you're holding the lens. So here's the way I fixed it. I put that little bracket on. It's only a simple little handle bolted to the uh, collar mount that comes with the lens. And now I've got a great idea of a grip that may very comfortable. You can hold it like this, which is magnificent for your photos. And you see the beauty of this whole collar arrangement. I don't have to actually rotate my arms too much or change my grip position. All I have to do is just spin the whole camera. That's so comfortable and easy. So I love using that. You can adjust the tension as you wish to free it up or make it tighter as you like. Uh, especially if you're gonna mount it on a tripod, make sure it's nice and tight. And then when you mount it down, it's gonna be nice and firm. 
but I'm finding here that if I have a little bit of freedom with that, it's very comfortable to use because it depends on what angle you're at and how you're taking the photo, but you can make your wrist and arm extremely comfortable. You're not dominated by the structure of the lens or camera. You can now change the position of that mount to suit your body so you're always comfortable. Tuck your elbows in, make sure you're nice and firm and well balanced, take your photos and you've got a great grip. You can hold it upside down like this, which is also very practical. But remember, your hand is nowhere near all these little adjustments and buttons. So you're not accidentally touching things that you don't want to be touching while you're taking photos or video. You can choose to, of course, if you wish. All you have to do is move it up like that. And then, of course, you can go back to this sort of holding and adjusting thing whenever you wish. And it's just that simple to have it back in operation, to have a secure rest where you're not touching all those arrangements. Also for carrying it, it's extremely good because you can use it like a, a what I call them, a video camera handle, where you can just carry it around like that and it's well balanced and secure. This is never coming off, by the way, this collar. I will say that it has a little bit of a jiggle. Let me just illustrate that close to the microphone. Do you hear that little noise? Do you hear a rattle? It seems like it's loose, like it's going to come off, but it isn't. No matter how hard you tighten that up, you'll always have that little rattle. I think it's a manufacturing issue. You know, they've just not quite adjusted that perfectly, so it uh, doesn't rattle in any way. But it never comes off, like it's not going to cause an issue, but I'm just really not loving the fact that there is any movement at all. Uh, so I've tried it many times to see if it does shake loose or it's a problem. It's not. It's not an endangerment, just a little bit of a nuisance. It really puts it down to the fact that what this lens really is a 100 out of 100 lens. It's, it's just a fabulous lens. But I'm going to give it 99% just because of that little rattle, which I think is an unnecessary oversight. So if you have it with your lens, don't be thinking you've copped a dud and it's only you and you've got a bad one. No, that's actually just how it's been manufactured. I'm sure they'll have an accessory or a, a part two version that'll come out in time, which you can just replace it and it doesn't have that little shake. But it's not that it's actually faulty in the camera. It doesn't cause me any too many issues, but I just thought I'd bring it to your attention so you knew what you were hearing. So just for a moment, what I'm gonna do is I often use a cotton carrier system, as I've done other videos with. You have a little uh, button on the bottom here and slot it onto your vest and it makes it very secure to carry. Let me just... Uh, pass onto that little video where I show you how the cotton carrier system makes this whole accessory and this unit much, much more safer and convenient to use. It'll only be a very brief clip, a couple of minutes, and then we'll get back to discussing other items. So hi guys, look, we were talking about the cotton carrier system just a little while ago, and I was demonstrating or trying to illustrate how I use the 7200 or something large like that, and with this new handle arrangement I'll put on. So just let me demonstrate that for you in a real practical way. So what I do is we have it set up here with a vest on my chest, and I've got the 7200 on my Nikon uh, Z7 uh, facing right directly in front of me. It's very well balanced, it's very comfortable this way. I can uh, walk all day like this because my hands are free, so if I want to grab railings or rocks or I'm climbing around somewhere I can certainly uh, be very comfortable and secure. Also if I'm doing event photography all day I can carry this one here a second camera on the side and again my hands are free and it's, it's very good for the back and the arms but uh, when I am shooting this is the key thing. So here we go, we release the cotton carrier now. And as you can see, I have the little safety strap. I mentioned this little toggle that I use. I was struggling with a little bit before, uh, but uh, that's very useful as a safety mechanism so that if I should drop the camera, it never hits the ground. So that's very secure and it's very strong. So I'm always feeling very confident with that. But the uh, point I'm really uh, illustrating of this today is that when this is attached, you can actually hold the camera all day very comfortably using the strap here as a weight burden, as it's carrying all the weight, if you like. And then you can just hold that handle that I've made. Uh, and uh, by using that uh, as a very comfortable means of support, you're just really directing the camera. You're just stopping it swaying and, and clanging around, uh, hanging off you, because you can hold it steady. You've still got one hand free if you should need it. And of course, this is right or left hand available, so it doesn't matter. But the point is you can't drop the camera or damage it. And that's really uh, gives you a lot of security. But with the handle, here is very very comfortable so when you want to actually take a shoot of course you can have this always in free spin and then of course you can take a shot you can have it like here you can have it there any position that you happen to feel comfortable you can hold it like it's a brace to support you can hold it with your fist you see in like a gun trigger sort of an arrangement I find all these very very useful options to use and as I say when carrying it it's great to be able to carry it with the strap taking all the weight and your handle here just you know, just really just guiding it and making it stop swaying around now of course you know I've got it attached up the top here which is very uh, practical that's where the standard mounting is so I get that off there. There is another mounting bracket on this vest as well. Both sides, uh, left and right, have the same options. And here you have a little lower strap mount, 
Now if I can get that on there, there we go. And now it just gives it a little bit lower. So you've got longer arms, you're a bit taller, then this is a very, very comfortable position to hold it in. Again, the strap is taking all the weight of the camera and securing it. And here when you're walking around, you're going from one shoot to another, one location. You don't have to necessarily mount it on the chest if you don't wish. You can have it in your hand, but you're still not carrying all the burden of the weight. And it is very secure. So I just wanted to physically illustrate that and show you in operation how that operates. I think it's a great idea. And also with this handle, of course, you can carry it just like a video camera and hold it like that. So you can hold it this way around if that's what you want, or as I've said before, you can turn it around, rotate it, and have it that way around, whichever way you choose. But having this on free spin, not I don't mean loose like it's just swaying everywhere, but just so it's a little bit of a firm rotation, it naturally will fall in a way that is very safe and comfortable. And uh, you know, as you're moving, it will slightly rotate that little bit just to find its own little balance and be very comfortable. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to illustrate that, that it's a very great system. I do like the cotton carrier system because, you know, it saves your back and arms aching all day if you're out on a big hike or filming like a shooting for a wedding all day. It's a great means of making sure that you're comfortable and safe and you don't get any back or arm injury. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of footage there. So anyway, I was just letting you know that these little handles are magnificent. They're very inexpensive and uh, small rig look after us with lots of varieties and options that we can use in our Z cameras. And I think they're all quite magnificent. Now uh, with these uh, things, I will point out that this particularly, this bracket alone has various different mounting holes on it that I'd shown you, uh, but also, you know, like you can see them here along the top, along the front, so you can mount accessories. When you're doing video work, and you need somewhere to put a monitor or a, an audio receiver or something like that, or even a microphone to mount, it's great to have those little options. And this little handle that I've shown, even though it blocks some of them that were at the front that you could have used, it does actually provide auxiliary mounts. You've got three little quarter inch threads here. So when you've got this into the camera, for example, and you're say doing video, and you need somewhere to mount something, you know, it's no problem to put a little uh, ball head arrangement and you can uh, immediately go and put accessories onto that whenever you like. Now I like these little things, the little uh, jo joiners if you like, and a quarter inch joiner you just screw it in there and then you've got a thread coming out which is particularly handy when you want to mount something like a ball head and you don't have a spare hot shoe. Now you could say why don't you just use a hot shoe on the camera? Well you could but sometimes you're actually using that hot shoe for something else. Let's say if you're doing video you might want for example a microphone here projecting forward a shotgun mic and then you might want to use this for a light or vice versa so you can have a little light here set up and you can have a microphone there or you can have the audio receiver here and the mic there whatever you've got so many choices so uh, just be uh, taking advantage of all those little accessory ports you've got and uh, it makes you know, your life a lot easier you don't have to have auxiliary tripods and all sorts of odd looking clamps flying around the place uh, everything can be quite compact on the camera and tidy on the tripod uh, I have used um, accessories like this on the Ronin. It really doesn't work, let me tell you. Uh, any, any accessory, even as modest as this, can throw out your balance. You really don't want to be using uh, many accessories on a Ronin. The only accessory I would uh, suggest you use is something like a little Road to Go uh, receiver or something for sound. But other than that, uh, keep it as uh, blank as possible, your camera. Just the lens and the camera, and you'll have no trouble if you're using a stabilizer. But uh, that's uh, pretty much all i got to say. The other one little thing I'd like to depart on uh, before we uh, leave is that when you uh, have equipment such as this handles, always make sure you've got a spare Allen key or a spare screwdriver or a spare little pair of pliers or something like that, just so you can get accessories on and off easily in case you happen to put them on a little bit tight at home. And then when you're out in the field and you don't have a spare tool, you can't get the damn things off, which can be very exasperating. So if you uh, lose one or whatever, have a spare Allen key or two, have a spare screwdriver or pliers. In the car even is fine, just so you can go get it and you can carry on with your day. So uh, don't be uh, caught short with our tools, and even a little multi-tool uh, can be very useful. But that's really what I got to summarize very briefly on the video today. Just really giving a complete thumbs up on the 51.2. Uh, if you're gonna spend the money, uh, you are gonna enjoy that lens. It is a brilliant purchase and a magnificent quality unit. Uh, but really, I think, you know, for 90% of people, unless you really have to be in a cramped area and isolate your subject for whatever reason, or you're shooting a lot in dark environments, uh, the 1.8S lens is a very excellent buy, great value for money. At a third of the price of this, it's not a third quality of the lens. It's probably 80% of the lens, just at a third of the price. 
So I just wanted to lay that out there for you. So you will have a good day. If anything I can do to help, if you want to ask me any questions, you need some advice or you want me to do something for you to try it out so you know if it works before you purchase, feel free to talk to me and communicate. I always love your feedback and your comments. So have a good night, guys.